Okay, are you guys ready? Are you guys so ready? ready? Are we so all ready? ready? So never been more ready in my life. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven. And I'm Justin. And I'm Kayla. And I'm Chris. <laughs> and we're the Faint Divinities, a channel that for the past five months, it's four to five, have been mm -hmm. dedicated to playing and talking about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from Darrington Press and Critical Role that since March of this year has been in open beta um this month july because we're recording this july 29th 2024 we entered open beta version 1.5 and this is the prior version before everything goes dark um it's closing out at the end of july which means we have just about two days left so that's it guys this is the end of open beta so today we are here to talk about as a group our experiences playing Daggerheart together um, what it looked like for new people remember that we have two people uh, that had never played tabletop RPG before Kayla and Chris and then we had veterans to various tabletop RPGs, especially Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, but some of us doing a lot more stuff. Justin is kind of our uh, maverick of the group. <laughs> He's involved in a lot of stuff. So, um, so we have thoughts, we have opinions, and we're going to talk about that today. Um, and then in the second half of today's episode, or if you're watching on YouTube next week's release... We're going to do a session zero because we're not done. Um, we're going to be continuing Daggerheart for the next at least few months, um, hopefully up to the launch of Daggerheart as kind of engagement uh, to get everyone interested in playing and build out the community a little bit more. So we're going to talk session zero for a new campaign we'll be coming back to this story in a little bit but i need a little bit of a break as the gm it's been a long five months um four and a half five months uh so steven is gonna... i will be uh yeah taking over for uh probably like anywhere from like three to five maybe even six episodes depending on how uh my players uh proceed through the adventure It'll be a real good time we're real excited but so the first part of this probably about an hour we're going to talk about the open beta our experiences the second half or again if you're on youtube wait until the next friday uh will be our session zero for that next campaign um last just for the people who've been watching and are here in twitch and everything remember this upcoming monday we're not going to be here um, we, we, that's why we're structuring the video in this way. We won't be here because both Chris and I are flying to Indianapolis on Wednesday of this week to do Gen Con. We're going to be at Gen Con 2024. Woo! Um, Very exciting. Yeah. And I know some of the people in our community are going to be there as well. If you're there, come say hi. Um, come, let us know. We're, we'll be in the Discord and everything. Um, I will be GMing Daggerheart for uh, at the Darrington Press area in the Marriott um, playing Marauders of Windfall in the GM seat. Uh, it's going to be a Ooh. session every day, two sessions on Saturday. So um, again, if you're playing Daggerheart, it might be me. Look for the person with, I know you can't really tell because it's so dark, but it is purple at the bottom and a pirate hat and that should be me. So um, I'll be at Heroes of Arcadia Heroes in there of with Roller Crit. Roller Crit! Oh, talk about that real quick. What's that game? Yeah, it's like a drinking RPG dungeon crawl game. Your health's like your... You got a little cup and your health's your alcohol. And then if you take damage, you just drink. It'll be a good time. Yeah. We're bringing this to Thanksgiving, just FYI. Like, yeah, very yeah. It's going to be the best. It's so it's a fun. fun. One. Me and Chris played it the other night. And uh, with two players, you get drunk real fast. It's a great time. Yeah. Like, so. you take every fireball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So, uh, but yeah, so if you're at Gen Con, come find us. Um, 
MC Cat said he was gonna ask what color my hair was now, and it looks black, but it's just not. Um, it's <laughs> it's it's brown and purple and blue, and it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I got dagger heart nails. They have like daggers and hearts on them. That's a dagger. It's about right? sick. Yeah, it's yeah. really exciting. So, um, okay. I don't really think we have a ton of announcements after that. Uh, just remember, guys, next week we're not here on Monday. We're taking the week off. So the next actual episode for the Faint Divinities on Twitch will be July 12th with Steven taking us through a brand new adventure. Is there anything any of you guys want to talk about before we dive in? It'll be August 12th. Just oh, yeah. Sorry. August 12th, guys. I'm really good at math and dates and calendars. Okay, so... Daggerheart, did it suck? Um, we're not gonna, no, no, it didn't. <laughs> we had a good time. <laughs> but, but, but I do, you know, remember guys, we could be very critical with this. Um, so it doesn't matter very much at this point, but if anybody in the community or watching this has surveys to submit and you haven't, remember this is all going away in like two days. You have to do some homework. Um, for all my players, remember to submit at least one. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how if y'all have been following along. I certainly fell behind on my submissions at one point in it. And I had to do some. <laughs> I did catch up, I think, but it was crazy. Um, so... Daggerheart.com is where you go to see Daggerheart. Um, oh gosh, I always show my search results. It's fine. You can know that I was searching Treasure Planet. Um, <sighs> it's How fine. dare you? Yeah, uh, but Daggerheart.com is where you go to see about Daggerheart. Um, usually I tell you guys to play Daggerheart, but this time you're going to the play test surveys area. When you click in, you get a screen that asks you if you want to see the heavy hitters play test survey, stop it, Bing, or the player play test survey or the game master play test survey. I almost exclusively in this game have done game master play tests. You guys have probably mostly seen the players. I have it both open but i think we're mostly going to talk about the player one today so how many players were in your party not including your game master is four where was this game session run remotely over the internet what session number was this uh the most recent one we did guys was 12 we did other little one shots and stuff so but it's 12 um and then what version of dagger heart were you playing version 1.5 and then we, we could just answer some of these i'm getting through that so we have a lot of these details together but i i kind of want to get through i think the gm survey is going to be better for this hold please while i do that but i'm also going to addre address velocidad's question oh, yeah i was about to say yeah velocidad uh ahead, Steven, do you read know it. i i don't know do you okay. know if closing the beta means closing demiplane nexus it's a great question and i think Veloc velocidad might actually know the answer you might be giving us a softball here because i know the answer which is that no dagger ah. is staying live on demiplane so that you can continue you to play while the they close the doors you're still gonna get access to that 1.5 system so guys get in there i have seven out of seven characters on there i found out today so it was, <laughs> it's a little bit wild um so i'm going to go ahead and do the gm one just because i think it's going to be more conducive to this discussion uh no we did not use this our level that we were was three for most of the game and we were playing 1.5 so the first question that they asked when it was the GM side of things was about, and I think it actually rearranges itself depending on when you click in, but one of them was combat. Did combat feel unengaging and repetitive? How does everybody here feel? For my, I, I want to get to my older players in a bit because I think you're going to have the dynamics of it, but I want to hear from my new players first combat did it feel engaging and new fresh every time or was it kind of repetitive for you guys um at first i feel like um and maybe this was because the ambush right that's the first thing you come across yeah um you go forever and then say if like two or three of your teammates go first and they roll a fear and then the GM goes again with like three fears. Mm -hmm. And then you're like sitting there for like an hour before you go <laughs> for the mm -hmm. first time. That uh, that could be rough, uh, like player experience wise. 
but I think that really balanced out towards the end. So I don't know. that's great. That's great feedback. Yeah, and and that actually filters into what I think me and the others are probably going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons here in a second. But Kayla, what about you? Any thoughts? <laughs> So it's it really I guess depends on which combat you're doing because if your character it plays to their strengths and you have something to do it's really fun when there's not a lot like it's a heavy hitting and you're a bard so you're just kind of like ah suck <laughs> it's you know I mean and you're yeah. watching and you guys are great storytellers so that part is fun um but when it's something that your character can do and they can shine you know in combat if somebody needs to get pushed back you know what i'm saying she pushed the hell out of them a little power push moment absolutely <laughs> we love to like see a wizard it. when you only have aoe yeah. spells right and it's just like mm. one flicker fly and you're like what do i do <laughs> yeah chris had a sh struggled in the flicker fly combat that you ran steve and he he said to me going into it, he was like, as long as we're in like an open area with a lot of enemies, I'm going to murder this. And then we came into a closed <laughs> area with one big guy. And he was like, I think no. I did like six firewalls. I was like, firewall, firewall. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit him. Hit him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What about you guys? Um, for my for my people who play tabletop and especially D and D fifth edition, well, no, I don't know. I don't want to quantify it. Qualify it. Go ahead. How do you guys feel? I, I definitely feel like uh, since more or less everything takes an action, it makes it hard to do anything that's more just for flavor or exploratory. You have to just kill, kill, kill. Otherwise, you will die. Um, that's one. That's the kind of biggest gripe I have. Okay. Um, you would know, wouldn't you, after you died? <laughs> twice <laughs> twice correct yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no i mean i agree with that I, I think that the the biggest like negative at first i i really disliked the just like anyone go whenever um i do like turns i like to know so i can kind of plan out and stuff but after like a, a little while i kind of got used to it to where it's like it, it gives an apps. It's like sometimes you might do more than others, and that it's like you, if you don't do as much as other people, it's not really that big. Mm -hmm. um, but I do. I agree with Justin that there's not enough things that don't re that require an action that actually do require an action that feel like it doesn't need to require one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely especially wish, uh, on Marauders what? when the action tracker came out at dinner. That was tricky, was say, wasn't it? I'm yeah. just for role playing. Yeah. 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 yeah it make, well, and like, that makes more sense if you're like in an interrogation or like in a like in something that is tense and like yeah. quick, where it's a yeah. long drawn out dinner. Like it's, I, I want to talk to someone, but I don't want to kill me later. Well, so right. <laughs> I think that that will come out in the wash because mm -hmm. honestly, only things that are actions contribute so dialogue does not and actually justin to your point of you feel like you can't do things that are free more free form and stuff i think that if we were to play this for a while and which we will and we have you know but i think the goal is actually to get a little looser with it and do things that aren't actions of course a movement is an action and, and but um but at that table setting, all of the conversations and stuff, that wasn't necessarily going to be anything, mm -hmm. but anything that triggers an actual role, that is. So it's mm -hmm. tricky. Um, and Especially I'm, because, you know, like, at, like, a dinner situation like that in role play, like, in D&D, in, in because that's what I play primarily besides yeah. this, is... Um, when you're talking to people, you're trying to, like, persuade people, you're trying to smooth and wine and dine. And uh, I, in 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 like a dinner situation, my ass roll five to ten times, <laughs> just like <laughs> moving around, talking to people, and like just like even like the the I was trying to get everyone to drink and stuff. Like you did consolidate that into one like large roll, but like if if I had succeeded at getting like one or two people drunk, I might have moved around and done it a bunch. Yeah, but. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely see like that makes more sense, especially if it's like more of like when you get into a like one on one conversation or like this group is talking to this group, like that's an interaction kind of thing opposed to hey, I just had a quick chat with this person, convince them to follow me around, great. Now I'll go over and talk to this other person. Like, yeah. like each one of those it's its own encounter kind of thing. But since we still store those fear or whatever else, um uh, it kind of still ends up piling on currently. 
There's yeah. some interesting I think, balancing that I I, yeah. I don't know how it would work. Go ahead, Chris. What were you saying? Um, yeah, I do know. Like, I had the feeling of. I think I made a comment of when we were like at a dinner party, right? It was like possibly tense. You were giving off the vibes that like something might be up, and I was like, "Yo, we better kill these guys uh, before we roll more fear." Like, because they have so much fear right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're fight, but like, our characters don't know that. And so yeah. it does give you some pressure as a player to like, I better fuck them up quick. It's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? But I do want to note that like, remember guys, just like your hope caps at six, so too does GM fear cap at six. So it's yeah, not like I can true. get a ton. Um, yeah. There's a little balancing there. I actually think one area that you could use this kind of a situation in is I kind of think that some of the purpose, and I could be misreading this, but we really went into a combat where it's mostly one guy, right? So right. I don't get to do a lot. I kind of think that it was get the GM prepared with a bucket of fear to use and channel stuff. I see right. how that would be an interesting way to, as the GM, do it, but it does put you well, on it's edge. It, it puts us on edge and I, I i agree like i think that that is a smart way to kind of like build up a, a stockpile before the fight happens yeah. like I, I don't disagree with that because i do as a gm coming from that side of the table um i like my big bads to be big and bad <laughs> and when they don't feel as big and bad because you don't have the actions or whatever to trigger them you don't feel like you can bring the pressure on the players. Cause like, that's part of the fun too, is like feeling like, Oh, someone might die. And then someone does die. Yeah. I, I will say though, as like devil's advocate to my own argument, you can't use that every time because otherwise your players are going to get savvy real fast too. Oh, it's a dinner, you know, don't do stuff. And in mm -hmm. fact, that incur that it discourages engagement rather than encourages yeah. it. Um, I agree. What I, I think just giving you from the very beginning, like, you know how they gave us as characters like a certain amount of hope, maybe give you a little more fear. And then it's, you know, you don't have to stockpile it, I guess, just for this one little play test. Because in our home games, we never have this issue. I, I have like, enough fear. I, I, right? I, I want to be clear that the thing I'm saying is like, uh, maybe this is what they were doing. I don't really think that that's what these social encounters are meant to do. Just to clarify, I think because th this is different. This is interesting that we get to talk about it because it's so different. Usually the only time the action tracker or in initiative or anything comes out is combat, you know? Um, mm. So it's interesting that Daggerheart has found a way to introduce it. I think it's just so that it is a meaningful situation. Everybody still yeah. cares about what they're doing. You're at a formal uh, dinner. You yeah, I do, I do. I do see that part of it too. Like, uh, although I feel like it's strange, it is a very like, hey, this is a high tense situation. Like, because of that, I'm bringing out the action track. Like, it's 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 intimidating yeah. to like add pressure onto like a, like a dinner. Like, you don't want to be just like goofing off like. Yeah, the other reason I feel like why that tool is needed there, because like, say, think of you are in D&D, &D, there's no reason you couldn't just continuously just ask them over and over again, hey, why don't you help me? Hey, why don't you help yeah. me? So oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, them guys. Me asking that repeatedly, great, that gives you tokens to work with. Do you yeah. know what this is going to be game changing for? Again, and you guys in the audience know that this is one of my Lion's Veil situations. It's a, is that like gratuitous torture scenes. Guys, uh, if yeah. somebody is now being like, answer the question, <laughs> well, that is an action. Answer the yeah. question. <laughs> so you will get players that just like, I've, it just happens where they're like, they rolled and they succeeded, so they're not answering. And they're like, well, I'm going to keep punching him then. And they just keep punching for whatever reason, and it's weird. Mm -hmm. um, in this situation, you're going to roll a fear, and I'm going to have fucking soldiers burst through the door and be like, what are you doing to this citizen, you know? Yeah, see, one, one thing I think would help balance it yeah. is, like, after an encounter's over, like, right now we already have it. We know where it's... Uh, it, you get rid of all your action tokens, convert those to fear, and then that's what you leave with. Yeah. And so all you would at most lose is one action token. Yeah. I think it would be better if like when an entire encounter ends, that fear just automatically gets halved. And that's what you have to go forward with. I thought that. Because like, 
if, if say if like you're in that kind of torture scene, whatever it is, and they've like racked this up, if it transitions directly into combat, they keep them. But yeah. if it ends and you move on to the next scene, then that makes more sense to like possibly stop, cut it in half, keep moving. It's so interesting that you said that because I am almost certain that like word for word, that was my last thing that I submitted as the survey was, hey, this was weird. Was it, was I supposed to remove the action tracker? Cause we went straight into combat. And then it seems like I had a lot to work with. Should, could, maybe that should be halved, you know, <laughs> like, so. Um, uh, you said you're limited on six fear. Are you also limited on action tokens? No. There, so yeah, like, that, you are in a continuous one. You could have 30 fear. Yeah, but, yeah. but remember that a GM, like you can't use all of the, if you have 500 action tokens, cool. It doesn't do and anything. And one creature, yeah. it doesn't really do much. Well, yeah. every single time, every single time someone does one thing, you can spend a fear and immediately do all of your actions across all of your people that you do have. That's fair. If That's fair because you can change it for fear at any point also. Yeah. So yeah. technically, yeah. and that is kind of what happened too, right? In the combat. Yeah. Um, now, in full transparency though, I don't think that it should be the case that in those dinners and those social settings, the GM should be doing stuff too. And I was. Um, Melandra mm -hmm. was rolling knowledge checks to see if she could... Uh, what, well, first she rolled an instinct check to see if she could catch what you, Tank, had fumbled intentionally, right? And then a mm -hmm. knowledge check to see if she could learn what you had done with it for herself. I was doing stuff too. It's just behind a, a curtain. At play, though, I could see it being really exciting because you'd see me grab an action token and put it back in and you don't know what I just did, you know? I think it's cool. I think it's. Cool. I, don't know, I didn't think about this earlier, but one bit of feedback just for for you since you're gonna be running at Gen Con, uh, for whatever reason, I personally didn't pick up on the reason for the tenseness during the dinner. So when you brought out the action tracker, it kind of made me extra suspicious of them, even though I had no reason to do that before. I don't think it was supposed to be tense, and that's why I was trying to lean out of it. I was like, "Hey guys, it's an action tracker. It's totally fine because it's supposed to be fine. The idea is just that you're." I, I think the thing that I like it, right, is that if you go over to dinner at your friend's house, you're in your pajamas, you're stuffing your face, you're ugly crying to the movie that's on. But if you go out to dinner at a fancy location, are you not all making sure that you're sitting up a little straighter and that you care a little bit that you're, you set your napkin in the in your lap? When do you do that at home? Does anybody eat with a napkin in their lap at home? It's a different only a psychopath. Only a psychopath. So, <laughs> so I think that it's only meant to be used for those kinds of situ. Philosodad said yes. <laughs> like, I, I knew there was going to be one. Philosodad. <laughs> everyone else is a psychopath, not him. Yeah, Shots so fired. They're going to land somewhere. <laughs> oh <Not>. God. So, <laughs> so, in my opinion, I like that because, and and also, I think consistently, man, people are being loud in my house. Um, I think consistently that. Uh, Oh, hold on just a second, guys. Be right back. Well, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I did. I, w I do think that it was a fun, like, adventure, though. Like, the module, the, the like, airship mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, it was um, fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think I like that one better than the first playtest game that we did. Yeah. The yeah. One. Did you like it? Yeah, it was oh, better than that so one. dynamic. Yeah. I, yeah. so we're going to get to our other questions. There are several, but, um, but this one, I do want to ask you guys just because we're talking so much about Marauders. Um, give it a rating. What out of 10, what, what kind of ratings are we looking at from you guys? My newbies. Let's start with my newbies. As always, you aren't familiar with many modules. Give me a rating. I don't know. Yeah. We're going to say a seven. Ooh, okay. Chris? Ooh. Uh -oh. Okay, so out of modules, I've done two. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And um, if I'm going off of purely the module, I guess I, I have two criteria, right? It's like okay. the module and then what the module does with you as a GM. Okay. So the Sablewood, I feel like, is whatever by itself. But you as a GM did a lot with it. I sure did. Maybe that makes the Sablewood a little better than I think. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Marauder's better, Sablewood a little less. 
at the end of the day, it always ends up being what you do with it as a GM that makes it special. I think you made it special. So uh, it was sure extra fun him. playing it with you because I've watched a lot of other ones, right? And some of the other ones where you were like, okay, I think that's more of like what the pa pamphlet or whatever says. Yeah. Uh, so I think I had like a special experience. Um, but I would say, yeah, Marauders is like a seven. Mm -hmm. uh, Sablewood, 6.5. Similar it's ranges. Six. It's okay. Yeah. Before, it's okay. before yeah. my <laughs> other guys answer, I want to note I bring to the table an understanding of Adventurers League and all of the modules that you run at games. So maybe now sitting here at this table, maybe I'm like skewed from from years of really well written, but a little bit sometimes not great stories, you know? Because for well me, written. for it's me, wild. <laughs> Marauders, nine five, nine five. For me, that is a <laughs> nine go. five module. <laughs> Okay. So, but but okay. listen, you guys tell me. You guys tell me. What do you think, Stephen, Justin? Uh, I I so I enjoyed it. I think the the story of it is really fun, and I think that I agree with Chris. Depending on the DM, it can be a blast. I think depending on the DM, it could be rough. Mm -hmm. Um, I would probably give it because it's got so many moving pieces, like a six point five. Because I feel like. I feel like with a with a good GM, that's gonna be like an eight. But with like an what was average your experience GM, with me? Oh, it was great. I okay, had great. a plan, I had a blast. Yeah, we're spoiled. I, if, if I'm, <laughs> that's if I'm the thing. That's why game, we could rate it so bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, if, I'm yeah. Quoting, if I'm quoting the thing at like what we played the other day, I had a nine. That was a blast. Oh, okay, great. Was, okay, a good great, time. Great, great. The overall module, I think it could be a little stronger. Really? I think that we'd have to talk I think, about that. How would you improve yeah. it? Je well, first, Justin, what is your rating? I, I'm going to say somewhere kind of boat, just talking about just the module, how you did it, great, all around for both of them. I would say I, I personally like the first one a little better. You have, like, you're, you're somewhere, you get a quest, you travel, you do a thing, you get there, and you resolve it. This one, I felt like it was a, a, not how you did it was rushed, but like how it's written seems a little rushed. Like, it's immediately like, well, you're up and going, you're with yeah. the people, it happens, it's over. Like, you don't actually get, I don't feel like we got to anywhere to resolve it. This is, is so satisfying for me as a GM, just because I one shots are really hard on me because I feel like there's so much story to tell that I, I have trouble with one shots, but I get that they have to exist, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of like for this on the positives too. There's a lot of like for this one compared to the first one. Yeah. This one has a lot more like world building and like interesting tools and mechanics to work with. Mm -hmm. But the first one is just, it's real basic. You literally go from castle, travel through woods, land in place. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a real basic adventure. Yeah. Uh, but I think it still is like a stronger like, one shot story. It's people know how that cadence works. This one yeah. is a lot more of you're immediately, uh, like get a little bit of world building stuff. You're immediately, you're then immediately deceived and you have to make a choice and that's you don't get anywhere with it. Well, and yeah, I mean it, it's it's I I didn't enjoy the like pacing of it. It's like, "Hey, get on the boat. This is pretty, isn't it pretty?" Wyverns. And then it's like, "Here's, you know, here's a quick combat. Oh, good job at the combat. Let's go have fancy dinner. Fancy dinner." And yeah. then the choice. It all happens like pretty quick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me. It could have happened within like four hours, but in the Sablewood, oh, yeah. it was like an entire okay. day and that's hard to make what, it a one shot. One thing I think would make it. Oh, oh you go, oh, you go. Okay. Yeah, one, one bit I think would make it a lot better is just say timing on like when that final like reveal happens. Yeah. Have it right before you like arrive, right before you're about to, you know, resolve all your stuff. It's the like the dinner ends, ends the night like progresses and then like maybe they like the ship like jars and then you get up to like it, like do an investigation of your own and that's when you find them down there doing the like extra torturing or whatever just I like i love that idea i think the problem that i have with it, the reason that i rate it so high is because and yes it's rushed but it all is it's built to be able to play in a four-hour setting and it, yeah no and to have like a it's lot structured of well for that it's structured really well for that yeah and, that, and i did I, like that in the middle of the fight oh my god are they torturing people down here i liked that yeah. it was interesting I liked those reactions. Yeah. it was so fun i did that. enjoy having like a, a bad bad guy 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you're like, yes, I got to just kick his ass. Yeah, out yeah this guy's out. kind of a just <laughs> absolute piece of shit. Yeah. Sure what now? I don't know what happened. There. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I said. I probably said something. You probably said something. Yeah. Okay. So, so just be, again, like I love talking. We're going to keep, go back to the survey in a second, but just real quick because it's Gen Con coming up and everything. <laughs> Oh, no. What? Okay. Oh. Thank you for being here. Hitman is a a word that I try not to say. There we go. Um, uh, (laughs) Clip it. Anyway. uh, Even do be a dad. (laughs) He do. He is a father. Yeah. You guys, what would you do if you were going to improve the module then? What would you do? Justin and Steven, you both had like some things. That, anybody, anybody jump in. Is there something you thought you could have, you could do to improve it? That's Maybe I question. played it wrong also. Like, this is just war. Um, so it doesn't really like, so they did a lot of things. Like at the beginning, they're like, don't look at the engine. There's okay. a secret. So you're like, okay, that builds some suspense. I think you did like a groaning thing or something at one point through the pipes. I don't know. I like, made but it, it do keening, okay. but that is nowhere in okay. the module. But like, I guess like when you're writing, they do like the rule of three. So give like three little hints before you do a reveal, Ooh. because it almost felt a little not like I I didn't know they were torturing somebody down there. And looking back, I saw that one example and that. I maybe would have wanted one more for people like me that are a little hard to pick no, up on that's context. So, that's so good. Now, I do, I do, it's because it's two things, right? As the GM, mm-hmm. you want them to be surprised. You want them mm-hmm. to not have figured out I the was. twist. But you also want them to have the tools to kind of be suspicious mm-hmm. and maybe have the twist, you know? So Something's okay, you know. going on. Oh, I always here. look at it as yeah. like, it's a mystery if there's evidence to be found and you yeah. can solve it agreed if you yeah. can't then it's just mysterious yeah, yeah. you know I what i mean solve uh, something like red herrings i was initially thinking yeah. that there is some, like captured some wyvern some like maybe that's the baby wyverns that showed up in the parents like trapped down there Ooh, i like and, that that's good yeah. okay and that, that kind of gives like reason like why these things are showing up other than just like our ship is designed to look oh like yeah them. why did the dragon show up just because? Just because. Okay. Yeah. No they just needed, needed, needed a me. conflict in the air. Yeah. And also they needed a hero- first. Okay, so a standard of one shots is three encounters. And usually that's going to be a combination of at least one combat and either an additional combat and a puzzle or uh, two puzzles. But that's just generalized speaking of tabletop RPG one shot structures. So they kind of followed that here, you know, when you mm-hmm. see that they had the wyverns and then they had the dinner. Actually, they had more because they had they had five acts in this just to be clear Mm -hmm. um but but yeah i think the wyverns were just there because wyvern attack funds airship and then also it gave the thing for the we edited our story right y'all were getting passage but in the actual marauders you guys have just been enlisted to like be servicemen on the boat basically Mm -hmm. so this is the wow you guys are diamonds in the rough I'm interested yeah. in your group. Come join me at my table. That so. Uh, I get gotcha. you. Yeah. That's kind of. Cool. I did have one thing too of like, yeah. um, I guess especially for like a new player, uh, when shit hits the fan, pirates are coming on board. Yeah. You start messing up the pirates, and you just get like the feedback of like. Oh. More keep coming. <laughs> you're like, okay, I hit him again. Back. More keep coming. Sometimes I can be a little like ambiguous where you're like. What do I do? What I know. I, I loved hearing Justin because Justin was like, we got to get rid of these grappling hooks. And I was like, please don't get rid of these grappling hooks. This is the whole thing. Like, like, but it was really good. <laughs> I, I, I don't, um, I need to reread that and make it a little bit more dynamic. Um, because it did feel lackluster to me, but maybe again, maybe that was my interpretation of it and not the actual module. It gets tricky. Yep. Yeah. Does it have anything written if the players do go onto the other ship? Because that would have been like if no. we were in time, that would have been my plan is to find that's going down there. Either the party's gonna handle mm-hmm. it or the captain to handle it. And like I will go to the other ship and yeah. you just basically they can't run away with nothing if they don't have a yeah, ship. You had a fawn that was leaping or something. I guess I was a frog. I, I, could I, I had a grappling hook. I could have kind of. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. go. You yeah. have the door. I you fly. can. Oh, he's a flyer. Yeah, I'm sorry. Kayla, you have arcane door. <laughs> yeah. I think it only works not in combat, though. I have to pull out the sheet. Yeah, I think. Um, Yeah, I don't. That would be. (laughs) Don't do that. I'm gonna do a little research. Needs to be available in combat. That's wild. Um, Yeah, no. 
it's it's there's a lot of things that people could do with this when there oh it's only yeah, when there's no I, enemies in melee range oh that's fine so you, you can, can do it, it in yeah. combat but nobody can um, be in melee range yeah no i think overall especially for like what it's for it's like it's like been created to be played at gen con basically like, this was like I mean, you know, it, it's not just that, but like that too. They want to see it played on like well, a grand scale. I, at the start of open beta, I thought that the Sablewood Messengers was going to be what happened at Gen Con. And I was really nervous because I was like, that's a lot. They got a whole town. They got a whole tavern. They got fields. They got a house. I was like, that's a lot. How am I going to do that? And then I saw Marauders and I was like, oh, you're on a boat. You can't get off the boat. Like you are stuck on the boat, and there's like one bad guy. Yeah, 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 exactly. But so. I think it's I, I think it's great for that. I think it's great for exactly what like that is is like a four hour kind of session. I think that it yeah. solid for something like that. I think it's good bones for anyone that wants to tell a really interesting story. I stand by my rating. Nine five. Nine five. Nine five. I loved Nine when five. I when I was reading this and I hope that it played, but and like yeah. I, I suppose I should it. read it. I suppose like I, like as a yeah. GM I should actually go through and read it. Yeah, you guys I as was trying I was I was trying not to just because I didn't of want course. to be spoiled uh, spoiled for like surprises and yeah. stuff, but now that I've played it, I'll go through and actually give it a read. And I took uh, liberties, but I did not take wild liberties with this the way that I did the Sablewood Messengers because I yeah. wanted it to be true to the source material. So, like, yeah. the I think, like, a liberty that I took was I made Augustus Kane kind of seem like... Because the way he's written is kind of just a broad-shouldered general admiral guy. And I was like, I don't think that's likable. I think you're... <laughs> you know, like, I wanted the twist to be there of y'all being like, I like this guy so that when when he's like, I drink with everybody. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? In my head, you when he, like, turned out to be bad, I was like, all that dope, positive masculinity just turned to ash in my mouth. <laughs> it just is awful. It was such a great time. Yeah. Okay. Anything else about Marauders before we return to the survey? Because th I love this conversation. This will help me the most at Gen Con. I think it gives you a good indicator, right, of like a player's rating and then a GM's rating. <laughs> Yeah. So that's cool. That's great. Yeah. Just to be clear, we though. we couldn't read it. Be brutalist with me real quick. Because if I need to tailor my ass off of this story before I get there, not of the module, because the contents have to be what it was, but the way that I ran it, rating. No, I, I, I think, like I said, I think that overall the play, the gameplay, the, what we did was like a nine. I had a blast. Yeah, I gave the module a seven, but everything with you, I've had so much fun, Rachel. Y'all aren't lying, though, right? Because yeah. I'm about no. to do this in front of so many people. <laughs> yeah, well, You're not going to embarrass you. yourself. You're going to do great. <laughs> okay. The only bit that I was going to say, I, like, as a player, I was like, it I felt like I couldn't do anything was whenever you had the other pirate captain basically running straight to where the, <sighs> the prisoner was. Yeah, I didn't feel like there was any way we could stop or interact with them. It was just great. We wait till we get there. Uh, that was yeah. the only thing I... I will say, I feel like yeah. Go ahead. You're if, good. I, I would have like tried to kill the, her. The pirates like slowly coming on board was kind of uh, an issue. Like if like they had snuck aboard and then suddenly like busted into like the uh, to like the dining room or something, and then yeah. they would have just like forced like a like a instant combat because what like it felt that. like was it what felt like we that? went up. If, but I then mean, how would they get from to, the dining? Room, like if they're just popping out of everywhere and there's just a bunch of them over how do you get from the dining room to the downstairs without yeah. just go out of the dining room like, like so just there's to be clear so, so you're not in a dining room you're you're in the mm -hmm. commander's quarters the commander's mm -hmm. table is inside of his quarters you know like a mm -hmm. ship it has that like back area yeah. where captain's he, quarters yeah, captain's quarters yeah. like so mm -hmm. really i even made it a little dumb in the story i realized afterwards because i was like oh you come out and you go up the stairs no if you're in the cap if the commander's t you walk out onto the deck yeah. That's how it works. And I played it crazy. Yeah, it's like a couple pirates bust into the room. We bust out, kind of thing. And then the captain, she's yelling on the top of the deck, oh, and then she dives okay. down into the. And, and it's like a chase to get after. Her. Yeah, if it was say like you are in the uh, you know in the captain's thing, you having dinner there. The you know hear something. The captain goes out to check it out. And then, like, while you are kind of deliberating what's happening, have the other uh, pirate, the pirate random guards 
bust into the room. You fight through them. You see the captain get taken down or the other person go running downstairs. You chase them there. Oh, good. Yeah, good. You know, and, and then I yeah. guess I could t totally remove the, the first part of that pirate attack thing that feels clonky of like wave, wave, wave of pirates, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you and again, the room. They, have to learn, they learn that they have to fight their way through the at least through this limited number oh, to yeah. uh, maybe maybe instead of them being on the deck i put them in the hallways and y'all are fighting them down the hallways to get to her you know because <laughs> like i because i want to stay close to the to the source material and everything to be respectful of what it is but i think there are little toggles that you can do uh which by the way you, you could also yeah you could also have it like like on deck you don't need to worry about the pirates because they're in combat with the soldiers that are on deck like uh, that was wonky too. That always is my thing in tabletop, and we have to get to other survey stuff. So this is gonna wrap yeah, us yeah. up. But that is the thing in tabletop that is always a little bit clunky to me. Is that thing where it's like, oh no, the king is under attack, and you're like, do you not have police? Like, where are they? You're trusting us, the level oh, threes? Like, where is your royal guard? And you're like, um, the king, you say? Yeah, MC Cat, thank you so much. You saying you did awesome um, from a watcher. I had a quick question. Yeah. to you okay. um okay so as a player right my in my memory of the fight we yeah. fought the captain of the ship on the bottom right. and the blood captain pirate was in the room with us right yes and so i don't know if this is like a thing that happens with the lack of turn order no. a lot of times in combat thematically you have a big badass just chilling like in the fighting game fighting stance the whole fight yeah, really not doing bad. anything yeah. and it's a little weird and like this blood captain lady, you would think that she'd be like fighting, right? You Instead, would. she's just like I getting know. shotgun shells. Catching them left somewhere. and right. Yeah. It's true. Same thing happened with Bruno in our thing, right? That Where I he can't. was like yeah. a buff frog and he didn't jump in to fight this glass snake. <laughs> this I was looking at him sideways right. as a warrior. I was like, <laughs> listen, this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> the the questions you guys are asking, the issues of like why aren't the soldiers helping and why isn't Calliope doing it is like the same issue of because players have to play. Yeah, players gotta play. Go ahead, Justin. Well, well, it's gotta play. It, it might be an interesting mechanic since you're basically going to spend fear to basically go. It could be helpful, like or a way for us to like spend resources. Like we spend a hope to basically get an NPC to go. Uh, be cool as fuck. Kind of chime in. Ooh, like, it'd be great. Very cool. In. Also, I could do this, right? Here's the thing that I could do. I could just say, she does this, da 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 da. Oh, it hits, da 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 da, and take no health away from him. You know what I'm saying? I could just be like, she does this, I, and nothing I, actually I, happens because then it's like, wanna, no, she's yeah, here with yeah. us, and you're like, kind of. Oh, playing, I'd rock with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That actually feels good. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mention the names occasionally, otherwise you forget that they're there. Yeah. <laughs> Unless 100%. you can like be token. Yeah, because it is weird. I, I in my brain, because we're I'm fabricating a story. I was uh, like, yeah, she's just taking care dad of says, Yeah, I was about to say philosophy. The recommendation for NPCs is that the NPC does a thing and it provides a oh, cool. I do. So I did have like a thought that. to bring her in on our tag team role, but I was like, ah, I don't want to overcomplicate it. Oh my god, I would have loved that. <laughs> she has an attack and everything. I would have done that. That was the other thing though, is like, so here's my thing, right? I like, if Velocidad, it's such a good thing to say, and I love that. My only, my only, uh, it's just, she doesn't feel, there are NPCs and then there are NPCs, you know? She's not just like a, ta just a person in the town. She's like, Calliope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, it's weird for her to just provide advantage. She's, She's like, here, use this. What, no. What I call a notable NPC. We gotta be honest. She's fuck it. she's murking people you know what i mean she's not there like you're really using that sword great here's mine no sh never living so, legend yeah i like what chris is saying where maybe at one point i have her go in and because the other thing is i what do i do if i give her a turn she counts as a player and then if she rolls fear turn i'm playing myself you see what i'm saying I, I, I feel like if probably... the players spin something of their choice, then it happens. No other thing, no other action tracker, no fear. It's just the player spent the thing, the, the NPC gets to go for free once. Oh, I love Good point. that. Because you do spend a resource, yeah. The player spends a thing. Is that what you're saying? The yeah. Play yeah, like the player so, spends the hope. So like I ask 
the players. I'm like, hey, if at any point y'all want to action Calliope, spend a hope. Somebody spend a hope, and I'll let her do something crazy. Um, we'll do it. Velocidad you says, crazy, you have something basic. Yeah. Combine concepts, though. Describe her doing damage. Don't count the damage, but give advantage. Agreed. I think that's the best argument. Yeah. Is like, that's beautiful, Velocidad. 100%. Because I don't think I want her to be able to, to take away from the fight. I don't want her to add actions. So I will describe her, and then I'll say, oh my god, the punch that she just landed leaves him wide open. One of you makes in the next attack an advantage. I love that. I think that's great. Okay. Also, guys, I truly am. It's it's Monday right now. Uh, on Thursday, I host my first session. Literally, any suggestions. Any suggestions, throw them into the Discord. That's my players here. That's my audience, community. Let me know. Anything that you think I should do, I want to make it as good as I can. Did we like the treasure planet scene with the map or did we hate it? Okay, that was, was so cool. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. All right, we have to move on in the survey. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All right. Next one. I feel confident making gameplay decisions. It goes from strongly disagree to disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree. How confident do you guys feel making gameplay decisions? This is more of a GM question. I feel very confident, but like yeah, I was gonna no, say, but that's um, I, I feel like that's just because of like years of experience of GMing and stuff. It's like I I can go into a one shot with friends from work, and I can invite them over, and we can have a grand time, and I can be drinking and goofing off the whole time I'm doing it. And I'm focused in on what's happening. That's just I'm doing it. Yeah, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Like I feel very uh, like. GMs who've been GMing a long time, you ain't gonna sway us. You know, we got this. We know what's <laughs> happening. Like, it's not. You might get the sweat on us every once in a while, and we're just like, oh, fucking shit. I did not think about that. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's pretty rare, uh, you know? <laughs> for me it's like the opposite sometimes i guess because i'm like a brand new player with like add so i have trouble paying attention um and there's a lot of like responsibility of like understanding the vibes everyone else is putting out and trying to like pick up what they're putting down sometimes right. i'll say some shit and i'll be like wow i'm fucking way off base like <laughs> everyone else's yeah. mental picture is somewhere else and i'm over here because i am a maniac and i can't sit still i do that sometimes. i would just uh, say uh, like uh, somewhat agree like on you know if i'm confident making decisions and i think that's just because of my level of experience i don't think it has anything to do with dagger heart okay. i just have a hard time reading the room and then like i'm worried i'll jump in and i'll mess up somebody else's stuff okay so yeah yeah i i think that's a uh, justin i think you're the only person who hasn't really said uh, i i assume that you feel pretty confident in decision making though i don't know the, this guy over here <laughs> yeah, the only reason I would say no is just whenever, like I like mentioned earlier, it's kind of hard to know when you can do uh, more flavor stuff, like not just moving towards like progressing, like to to kill the things, to defeat the things. I like, that's like why I can't really say I want to do this flavor thing, spend this action token, or possibly roll a fear, and now get someone killed. <laughs> I'd like to see it. us, and Steven, you're the next GM, so you nix it if you want to. But I would like to see us do more flavor more flavor that doesn't accrue like isn't actions and stuff and it's just that kind of stuff you know like i mean really and like here's the thing is we're we're moving out of like the actual like survey session the beta is closing oh, yeah. we get to be um, loose. <laughs> i'm gonna be a lot looser with it what i what, what i encourage with all my players is be flavorful have like the the Delightful. bits to it and as you are telling me what you're doing, if I think it needs an action, I'll tell you. That. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. I, if I don't, if I think it's just really fucking cool, I'm gonna let it happen. <laughs> okay, so generally speaking, we mostly edge on the side edge. We mostly agree that <laughs> that game that this game makes us fairly confident in gameplay decisions. Um, okay, all right, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of agency in this game. I think so. Too. Like, yeah. they give you a lot of opportunities. Yeah. I'm not going to use this um, the one. This is the GM principles and best practices in the book were not useful to me. You need it. That's crazy. Yeah. You be careful with the wording. You'll summon HID. What is HID? <laughs> like, uh, Shogun's alter ego. 
<laughs> oh, the Robin dude is bad. You're not there. supposed to say. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, it man is. He said Voldemort. Oh, look at Steven. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of these questions are for the GM, so like I will answer for me briefly, and then Steven and Justin, if y'all want to give very like very brief answers. The GM principles and best practices in the book were not useful to me. I love the GM principles and the best practices. Keep, 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 strongly love them. Any disagreements? Um, when I used them, they're great. Great. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> think... <laughs> the game was difficult to run and manage for the GM. I don't agree because to me, again, D&D 5th edition has just as many complex things. They're just different yeah. complex things. I think it comes out in the wash. Um, yeah. But some people disagree. Some people say this game is very heavy lifting for the GM. Thoughts? For all of the counters is a lot. Or if you're if you're wanting to use them, if you're, if the if the thing says you have to use them, like there are some creatures that can be a lot when there's more than one in play, and some characters, some creatures have two to three on them, yeah. and that can be a lot when you're trying to do everything else. Do you know what I've realized from Daggerheart is that. I was always using a lot of counters. <laughs> I didn't. I don't. When, I don't. When think... they're ones you want to make up yourself, that makes sense. But when they're ones that are pre-made on there and this character won't work right if you don't use them, is where it's a, a, a problem to me. I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. How many characters did you like have that had that issue though? Uh, I there was two the characters in the one shot I did. The Befog had one, yeah. and then the uh, I between the two different times I ran it, the like. Which oh. or the necromancer had multiple. Can we talk about this real quick? I have a marketing idea that I I, I think I put into a survey feedback, but I'm going to not. I'm sorry, it's not marketing. A product idea. I think uh. <laughs> I did the survey. Uh. I was like, I want a dagger heart abacus, and I'm only kind of joking. I want <laughs> what I want is like a, a, a there could be an electronic version or a physical. I want a physical version where it's like little things. It's like eight. So that you have all your trackers, all your counters, and then it's like very visually appealing and helpful. <laughs> I'm misremembering this, but I feel like Talos and Jaffe mentioned Abacus, but it might have been one of the other ones during one of the calls. But I think they said that they were bringing like for their own home game. I think they had an Abacus on the side. I feel I, like I remember them mentioning that. I don't remember that he's saying this, but oh, I yeah. need one. And and I'm telling you what I also want in it. I So I want like a square thing. I want it to have the abacus little areas, but I also want one little side of it to have a a flippable sand thingy. I want, I'm telling you, I, and then at the bottom of it, a tray for each of your dice. Like, I think it would be so hot. So sexy. It'd be fancy. Ooh, it'd be I, wanted, fancy. I would spend all of my money on it and you'd have to, because that would be expensive. Um, okay. We could make one. Ah, let's, Christian, please. Okay. The, ru <laughs> the rules were confusing or counterintuitive. This is for everyone. Um, rules, confusing, counterintuitive. Um, I can Only on very rare occasion, like our fireball incident. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. fireball tag team incident. Oh god, that was oh, awful. Yeah. It was it was good to have it, but that was in one of our one shots. Yeah, um, that was painful. Yeah. MC Cat says, yeah. for real yeah, though, it'd be more. so helpful. But then they also say Mercer has one that attaches to his screen, has an action tracker and a fear tracker. I'm telling you, when I say I want the GM screen, I want all of that stuff on it. Give it. Give it to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Share. Table. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> So back to this. The rules were confusing or counterintuitive. Sometimes, yes. That's yeah, I'd say right in the middle. I, I, but that, that's... I, middle, me. Yeah. Keep going. There's sometimes there's rules in fucking D&D &D and other tabletop games that are yeah. strange and counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would like the, the hierarchy like they have in D&D &D, if there was an equivalent for this one where it's like, you know... Uh, specific beats to general and there's yeah. like you know, it's always you know dm's call specific general and whatever else so they ha oh yeah that's a good point so they they have the paramount ruling there which is rulings over rules that's that's yeah. their their big answer but i agree they should also have like the general and specific kayla chris you guys were newer how are the rules for you guys confusing counterintuitive was some was it mostly okay how did you guys feel I mean, 
in the beginning it's just a lot to like kind of take in once you get used to it it's fine i think like they were saying in any tabletop rpg some of these rules are gonna be you know yeah i had a good time and i don't think it was too hard to learn and once you understand the rules it's fine that's great that's mm -hmm. great i that's what i wanted to hear because you're a new player so i want to hear that Ooh, good point chris yeah yeah um I guess I try to find like a common ground of like which is fair criticism because it is a game that is imaginary. Um, yeah. So I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, when you right. code it and you're making an actual video game or a board game, everything is is binary. You know, it's this, it's this. If this, then that. This isn't that kind of game. So I don't think there's a way to fairly like even criticize um, some of it because no matter what, you're gonna be making some shit up. Um, <laughs> That's so much fun about it. Makes it harder to play, but I feel yes. like this game takes a lot out of you to play. But if you can pull it off, it can has a high like fun ceiling. Yeah. Low floor, but it does but high ceiling. <laughs> take a lot of mental energy. You are right. You are like, wiped. Because it's the world, <laughs> yeah. you can do anything in it. You can do yeah. anything. Um, mm. Like, and the looser the rulings, the more you can do that. So yeah. Um, Fully agree. I love that. I love that take. Okay. I, do I wanna... had fun. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad. Real quick, we have to, Justin, bring it up because you're the person putting it in. Oh, yeah. Let's throw it out there so I wouldn't forget. And if we got to pass it, that was fine. But uh, like the one thing with we Dagger Arms that we used to, and it's it's the exact same thing in uh, Genesis, but having the LED distances, it's not a 5, 10, 15 feet. You don't have to worry about that, more or less. But it's just melee, very close, close. Yeah. far and then very far you know how you can fix that that's how i fix it it's just ask it. rachel i'm not doing any math that's i'm like right. rachel yeah. am i in there i love that honestly i love that, Do that. A math <laughs> challenge uh, like yeah. if you're playing on it i assume the gen con one are y'all are you planning oh, to yeah. run it on the map or does it come with one i'm bringing uh, the map that i had here i i got it laminated i got i got it might be the thing like being in person might be easier because you can use what they suggest is like a piece of paper a pencil mm -hmm. yeah etc being yeah. virtual I have to like imagine what a pencil will look like where you are. <laughs> I know that like the idea of moving away from the, uh, this is my brain specifically structure and order makes it easier for me to do stuff instead of the opposite. So like for me, give me back my feet because my brain knows what feet are. My brain doesn't know what far is, you know, far <laughs> for me. Is it a? I mean, I'm three mediums away. Is it a hundred and fifteen <laughs> degree day, and it's a parking lot outside of the Kroger? Because yeah, th it doesn't matter if it's ten feet. That's very yeah. far. <laughs> or, or is it you know a walk through a beautiful park? That's a melee. <laughs> you know, I can do it. I feel like how we do it right is like uh, I have a stick. Does it reach? And you just like kind of think about it, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. I like what so. I agree. Distances are crazy. I have to say what MC Cat is saying. I made a ruler and just marked on the ruler the distances to use at the table. Hilarious. Brought out a card. Brought out a long card. Mm -hmm. brought out a Amazing. And Velocidad said, I honestly just substitute 5 feet, 10 feet, 30 feet, 9 yeah. feet. Me yep. too. Because that's what it is, guys. If you pull out a grid marked yeah. thing... Every square is five feet of movement in the real world. If you pull out a card, which is what the close range is, it's 10 feet. <laughs> like, it just uh, real, is. Um, real quick, does anyone know, like, from other classes or uh, ancestry, do any of them allow, like, faster travel? Or can you always only go that same distance? The road. Uh, <laughs> What what the rogue didn't have anything for the that. rogue has an ability. I think it might be at higher levels. But a specific you domain card. Ignore. It's not even faster actually. You could just ignore um, incurring like the 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 action roll to traverse mm -hmm. greater distances. It still takes your. It still takes the the Perfect. full action to do all that. You just don't have to make the roll. Like, but like the fawn has leap, so it can go farther. Like something about chasms and like you ignore the close thing. I don't know. I'd have to. Yeah. Pull it up really quickly. It's, but it's only there might be a couple. But oh, it's like for D&D, &D, that's like anyone can possibly get around that, you know, just picking a certain oh. race or whatever. D&D yeah. uh, &D yeah. is a game of 
you build your character to be able to move further because you could be excluded from a whole combat. If you, if, if this combat for Marauders had happened in D&D 5e with you guys downstairs, y'all wouldn't have made it up there before they I mean, had that, killed that's the That's what happened to me. I made it to the top, I got one shot off and the game was over yeah. for that first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. The, uh, uh, first time I ever played D&D at uh, Adventures League, we were chasing a monster through a dungeon and I was playing a dwarf and I just could I <laughs> out of the combat the entire time. Yep, it happens. That's what happens. Short little so. legs. Little legs. <laughs> okay. I like I know what module that was. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's, I, I want to look at the ones from the player to see if there are any really interesting ones. Generally speaking, each person, if you have anything to chime, yes, Justin. I just saw the top first topic. I did not enjoy Jimbo's abilities because they didn't make sense for him. <laughs> That's my own fault. <laughs> yeah, this is not... yeah. You that, didn't that is, play a rogue. Got to be honest. That, that is one thing about Daggerheart. If you pick the class, you have to play the strings, or you can't play it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, That's that, what you I do like playing which, characters. which was kind of crazy because I felt like at the beginning they were like. Don't worry about it. It's all going to work. And now it is very kind of like structured. What? What do you mean? Uh, I mean, like, because like we you have, have like, to use your domains. Not structured yeah. in the way of equipment, I feel like, right? Yeah, yeah. the equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's just yeah, like. Yeah. The abilities that it very much is. I guess that's true. <laughs> you put like plate mill on a wizard. It's not as effective as you put plate mill on a fighter or a guardian or no. Uh, Warrior, yeah. yeah, because you get those abilities that like double I mean, like, it or like give you even half if it's like cool, you can use it. For you. you just it's useless to you because you don't have everything that stacks with it. You, you have to, to lean into that class, otherwise, it's not yeah. gonna work for sure. But that, but that's not different from D and D five e. You get locked out if, if as a as a halfling or a gnome, you ch literally can't carry and wear some things. <laughs> I, I, I mean, don't know yeah, if you can't. Um, you just you have just to read when you're in it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all both are talking over each other, so I could not hear what you said. What? How can you? Uh, if if you're a small creature, you can't use heavy weapons. You you can. You just have disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, if I had, say, if I was playing a wizard and I had plate mail on here, but then I just had to roll a negative d6 to every time I rolled, I would do that because the armor is still effective for me. But it's not a you. It's not in Daggerheart. You can't use no, it. Right. I don't right. know why you would do that you in still the get first the same place. Uh, amount. It's just Kayla, think it well. Yeah. This this all comes down to me of that thing where I I am not a min maxer. I don't try to max out anything. But I also <laughs> don't try to shoot my character in the foot and send him off to a race. And Justin does. <laughs> If, if I can do that and give out a luck, great. But if I can't, if I do that and it doesn't let me use both my legs, then fine. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's just wild. So uh, play a character the way it's written. <laughs> let's, let's see if we like it. <laughs> we're about to see. We're going to talk about session zero stuff later, but yeah. Okay. But he does. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, we have to, guys, just as a time check, we're an hour in. And mm -hmm. we have not even session zeroed at all. So, so we, we like, uh, oh, Rachel yeah, said, let's wrap that, it up. Huh? Let's go. Yeah, we're doing that. So, Ooh. I mean, like, guys, I'm willing to stay on as late as y'all want to, but it is, you know, we're, we're we're on for our hour hour. <laughs> yeah. hit us with the next one. Well, okay. So, real quick, did you enjoy your character's abilities? I yeah. always like Anora's ability. Yeah. Okay. The Ranger's focus. It felt like it was wanting to be Hunter's Mark. Yeah. Didn't feel good? Not strong enough? It, like, it, it gave the enemies stress when you hit them. Yeah. Um, but I just, like, as a player, you don't see that, like, as yeah. it. I don't think you were ever calling that out for me, were you? Because mm. Steve, oh, also you very <laughs> rarely attacked with you. I don't, I don't remember you ever telling me uh, that my characters took stress from that. That is incredibly strong against monsters in Daggerheart uh, because they have very limited stress. Most well, monsters, mean, right? creatures, yeah, most creatures like at levels one through I think four have like one stress, and then they're vulnerable every time. Um, 
call that out if you're a ranger. Um, but yeah, I, I did read through the ranger. I don't know that it, everything was super strong. Um, Tank, Chris, you had a lot, I think, from Tank. Did you appreciate your character's abilities? You were a warrior. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, uh, having attack of opportunity and you being the only class that has that, it does feel that very was, special. That was cool. Um, it creates a play style for you that is unique to the class. That's a good thing. I think every class should have like a nice flavor because then you can go into a game being like, what do I want to get out of this? And it could tell you like, <laughs> if you want to do this, do this. If you want to do this, do that. Rather than it being ambiguous. Um, so that's cool. Um, I struggle figuring out. I mean, I guess a warrior is just like a fighter. So it's like, is he evasive? Sure. Is he uh, a retaliation build? You could run it. If Is he an armor guy? You could probably run that too. Um, yeah, he's okay. He's cool. Uh, uh, wizard was really fun. I feel like early level wizards, tough. Later level, I feel like you don't get a single target spell till what level eight. I don't know. Um, that can that's crazy, think, right? I like you're, that you're playing you're for like a whole year. I think your main weapon is supposed to be able to do a magical attack far, like a equivalent to a firebolt, but it's yeah. like your your uh, it's yeah. weaker. So it's wizard? like D six for your attack for a wizard. Can't but it's like still your same... proficiency, so like if yeah, you have a high proficiency, it's still like. Okay, like yeah. can't they do the same like grimoire? Like what? I think it's the same card that Anora does. So I think you get power push. You get a little push. That's a what? <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you do get power push. That might be the sorcerer it's one. The blue right? one. I don't know. Hold on. I'll show you the color of the card. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> if it, if it's the grimoire, and then you tell blue. me. Okay, hold on. It is it grimoire. Is, yeah. Yeah, it's that blue guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do get that one. Yeah, you get power push in there. Velocity. Of course, it's not as cool as the other one, maybe. But all right. Yeah, he's Velocity so smart. It. It's a grimoire. <laughs> so, be me. Okay. So just to circle back real quick, did you like the character's abilities? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Sorry, I was giving. <laughs> no, 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 you're good because you just rambling here because you're trying to think back on like months of mm -hmm. playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but like you had some criticisms, I think, related to evasion, right? Like those were some of the ability. That was some of what was built into the warrior that you didn't necessarily like. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not um, certain that evasion works from a player experience in terms of it being like fun. Um, if I'm being honest, your wizard you know I mean? was amazing. Uh, the wizard was cool. Yeah, that one did work. Um, that was impressive. <laughs> I think some of that was because he had like a monster that was um, many in one. The so they had like, oh, yeah, it was the, the horde. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the main guys hit me every time, um, which I, I feel like Daggerheart tends to be like a couple real elite guys rather than like you're fighting like massive armies. In my experience, I haven't played that much. Uh, I think but, it could go both ways, but it just depends on like what the story is being told. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those things. It's tough, right? Because it's like I, I just give my unfiltered thoughts, but it's like I can only speak on what I've personally played. Evasion feels weird, clunky sometimes. Yep. I agree with that. Boomer so bust, say, like Steven when it doesn't work. Thing. Yeah, it just feels a little weird. I feel like it's like there, like the like it, I like it, and I want to like it more than I do. Um, yeah, but there's still just like it feels. It feels like it's not enough sometimes. Yeah, it's missing something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One, so, another oh, yeah. part on the the rogue part, just like think of it as trying to play a rogue normally. Uh, I still like sneak attack. I think that works great. How they word it, it's a little weird. Uh, just on like say and could, this could just be a demi plane issue where it mentions like one d six and then you get all your other uh, d sixes with uh, your hope stuff so it can, can be a little confusing there. Um, I can better word that in my server. Yeah, I have no me. idea what you just said. So could you yeah. tell me again what what rogue? All right, so sneak uh, when you use the attack, you get one extra d six. Yeah. Uh, and then you get a number of d sixes equal to however many hope you spend. Yeah. And it's a little confusing on like having like a, it's says a d six. It doesn't say one d six in the word. I saw that. I saw that because I was yeah, looking at the that, I hate, hate that because I don't know what I'm supposed to roll. Put that. It, it in actually the is one d six. It's not eighty. It is one d six. It's supposed to be one d six. Put it in the feedback. No. 
because that's how it actually like spits out to Demi playing the like auto clicker thing. It does the one d six there, and then it adds the d six of other damage. This is where I, in my heart, I know that there's a little bit of me that's a rules lawyery thing because I was reading the rogue and I was like, it says, uh, but then it says d six. I'm just gonna roll as many d six as my proficiency. I wasn't gonna bring it up. Those <laughs> mouths don't get fed. <laughs> you don't know. Oh, okay, yeah, that's survey that, feedback. Yeah, that and then all the hide ability, it seems kind of useless. Like 1d6 towards a hit, I had to use a whole action for that. I'd rather just try to hit him twice. I, uh, that is my biggest thing. When we're yeah. talking about characters and their abilities, I think there is a lot of stuff that in this game, you have to spend very valuable things to do eh, a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. You know? I, I would personally switch it to hide it is like if you don't move or you move and don't attack, you're automatically hidden. Yeah. That's how I would just leave it at that. You don't have to spend anything else. It's cool. You gave up move or you gave up an attack. I and then yeah, assuming you are, you know, hidden, you're not gonna be can't be seen, all that kind of stuff. Um uh, well there's that. And then the other part is like on similar to talking about other note earlier on the domain cards. If you're not playing a lying person that is trying to stab people in the like from the shadows, if you're not lying and stabbing from the shadows. You can't use any of those domain cards for more or less. Like for it's made rogue. to walk for the rogue. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, there's other ways to play a rogue. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it seems like if you don't use those, you can't really use their abilities. I agree with that. I, I agree with that. I didn't think of that because I am in, I, I'm, I'm a tropey. I play tropes. I love tropes. I, I, that's what I wanted to do. I do too. Loss of Dead, I agree. I, I have noticed that a lot of the abilities are front loaded, but they don't scale as well. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of abilities are front loaded and don't scale with level. Agree. And I that... think you're to like swap them out with the vault. Like you get your better mm -hmm. ones later, get rid of your old ones you're not not use anymore. That's a good point too. But back to that rogue thing specifically, it's not specific to rogues. It's it's a in this game, I think the the domains being your general key behind your character. It's not really that ability, it's your domains. And they're not varied enough to allow your characters to feel super flexible. You're kind of one of two things. I think that what they need to do, and I, I kind of thought I, I mentioned this in one of the surveys I put back, I'm uh, pretty sure, is they well, they need to let you have three and choose two. Yeah. Like, like do something like that. It's like, okay, this if you're gonna play a, a bard, you have these three domains. Choose yeah. two, and those are the domains you're proficient in. Yeah, so, like, if you're like a more of a punchy a rogue, you can like, or more of like a heavy hitter rogue, get rid of all the grace ones, pick bone and midnight. Yeah. I mean, that's how that was. Floyd, Floyd was a rogue, and that's exactly how I played. Punchy. Him. He was. He it's he had a rape. talkative rogue. You could be a quiet rogue, oh, and like yeah. quiet all rogue. the grace, all the grace abilities, you have to be a talker. Yeah. Yeah, it's like shadow. Either you're quiet and sneaky, or Grace, mm -hmm. you're talky, charming. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. Grace is the other one the bard can use. So like, yeah. it's charming stuff. Yeah, well, that's yeah. supposed to be the scoundrel and your like you know backstabbing rogue. That's the two options you got. Well, uh, sorry, scoundrel being like a Han Solo kind Han of Han Solo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I love. Again, for me, these are the things that make sense. I like it. But um, what's the uh, what's the guy from uh? Princess Bride and his pirate alter ego. And they go and throw it. Oh, wait. Uh, the, no. the Dread Pirate Roberts. Dread Pirate Roberts. Yeah. 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 Uh, that would be I've... an example of like, more of the midnight and like, I guess yeah. he's a little bit of a talker, but uh, like kind of more thinking. midnight, more fighter. Yeah. Like, That's what I, th yes, I love that. But yeah, I think there needs to be more domain flexibility for the game to really feel like the loosey goosey funsy times that it's saying that it is, you know? Yeah. Um, you feel a little pigeonholed. That said, I think some of the things that they're doing in general are really good. I love the I think, rogue thing. Yeah, rogue I, rally I, feels great in this game. Ooh, yeah, with the bard. Oh, uh, I love oh sorry, that. bard. I, I meant bard. I'm so sorry, guys. The mm -hmm. bardic stuff feels so good. And I love the companion in this game. Let me let me circle back to the the. We all love the, the rooster. Is amazing. This is the best companion I've seen in any tabletop. And leader it's so, of the, so uh, good. Fireflies. Yeah, it's so, yeah. so good. Leader <laughs> of the Firefly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the no, that's... Four wow. companion. 
dynamic, gorgeous. It's he insane. feels like a real character. In most mm-hmm. tabletop, you forget that you have a companion. Like it's or you, or you're <laughs> just like completely yeah, worried about them getting hit mm-hmm. in the very first round. Yeah. You're like a yeah. companion's gonna die. Yeah, and they do. That's why you're afraid of it, because they do. So Okay, we're only going to spend like 15 more minutes on okay, this okay, session. Fair so enough. we're going to I do. Sure. I do. Yeah. I so agree. I'm not going to bring this up on this call, okay? The ability, I'm going to say it, but we're not talking about it here. The abilities and information on my cards was clear and easy to interpret. Guys, it was open beta. <laughs> the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. And if it was yeah. no and you didn't submit survey no. feedback about it, then that's on you. That's on you. Because <laughs> they literally are asking for it. So yeah. sometimes it was crazy. And uh, and they've been doing updates. Um, tag team fireball <laughs> stock growth combo you mean mushroom cloud that was the name of that um, whatever it was <laughs> yeah okay it's one of a um, kind outside of that um i i really the only one that we're truly skipping beyond that one was the abilities inform and information on my character sheet was clear and easy to interpret but i think we mostly talked about that in the context of other stuff um everybody anybody have anything to add for that one I can't speak towards that. I never use a uh, paper sheet. I only use demi plane. Talk about your demi plane one. It's it has your abilities it's, and stuff. Yeah, it's it's fine. Okay, great. Yeah, <laughs> pretty identical. Right. I, I, I like. I appreciated how it, like you how they do the, like the hands for the weapons. Like it's I did. I like that. I say nice. that I want to play it. I want to play as that one oh, yeah. fighter, a warrior that lets you do two handed weapons in, or in one hand. Yeah. But okay. I want to see how that works with that. But yeah. me too. I, I, yeah. I also like. I'm interested at it. I will, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. This is the big. The big ones are these last things. They're not. They're not like. They're just my favorite things that I really want to talk about. Um, the first one is: Is there any clarification or tool that you think Darrington Press could have given you, given us? that really would have improved our experience. Mine, Abacus. I was going to say that Abacus, abacus. sounds sick. <laughs> yeah. I want the Abacus. Um, uh, yeah, outside of that, I've said GM screen. I've also said a back to the player sheet that shows things like distances, you know? Um, oh, yeah. But anything that you guys can think of. One one book PDF to control F or have table contents to go through opposed to 10 documents. Agreed. I think that'll cut. Co- yeah, agreed. I think hopefully that's going to be part of the release. But, right. <laughs> but. like that and also like uh, I don't want to say like an inventory sheet, but like how they have like the weapons and stuff in one place. I just had no other concept of what else is in the world to look through. Think of like a player's handbook. Here's the basic items. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Has, even like mentioned here's your like food packs and this kind of stuff. I don't know what things are, how much they generally would cost. And I there know it varies. No, that's one of my feedbacks and it's one of the community feedbacks and I haven't seen any changes to it. There are no costs anywhere because the like argument is you be loosey goosey and Darrington press. You are going to turn away people who want a GM by not having a price for a potion. They don't feel confident enough. Is the banana right. cost? $30? $50? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, it, like, it, it just please put some some proposed costs for your items yeah. or people will feel lost. Um, or just like a, a scale. This is a $1 sign. This is a $5 sign. MC Cat yeah. crazy. Drives, you yeah. guys. Yeah. MC I Cat. feel like I'm a- in our chat. Yeah old school gamer like i remember back in the days you would buy a game and then you'd buy like the guidebook do you guys remember guidebooks that would go with <laughs> yes games? we do i would love that for this <laughs> yeah. like even yeah. just like areas things shit you find in this area the prices of them oh, like you did in a guidebook back then would go that. good we for do this have that you guys now that we're like you know y'all can look through anything um their area stuff is so cool. Go look at the Sablewood, please. Mm-hmm. It's so gorgeous. Okay, cool. Yeah, they have some of that, but they don't have prices for stuff. And it yeah, makes me I know we don't want to make up economy. Not, <laughs> but it kind of feels lazy on their part to make us come up with prices. It's I don't want to so- be mean. okay (laughs) i love the thing that you're saying there i don't think it is the idea is this okay this is the idea i 
think, which is that mm -hmm. in Dungeons and Dragons, as an example, it says a potion is this much money. So you go, Stephen, always, I always think he's frozen, but he's just still. So, just uh, yeah, you go to <laughs> a town and it's like, it's 50 gold. Give me 50 gold and you do it. And then you go to a city and they're like, it's 50 gold. You give me 50 gold. Now, here's the reality of the situation. If we go to our hometown, Kayla, and we try to buy a gallon of milk, mm -hmm. it's a different price than it is somewhere else like then do two different prices rural or this level this level Ooh, now that, i that love it's done. what you're saying that I... that is done and we didn't have to do all the work and they yeah. did it here's the price scale and here's the scarcity yes yeah. yes yes there you and, go yeah and that's where i know that sure. matt mercer you could put it on your abacus the yes. scarcity and the price scale. <laughs> put it I, right. Yes! Daring to press. Give me the abacus. I want all of these tools. A I'm really thing. excited to see uh, Rachel's like two foot tall abacus. Guys. That she just oh, makes no, on her own. One where you like <laughs> one way. Like you flip it around and it's a different color. <laughs> Chris has weird <laughs> skills, and I'm going to put him to work on this. He's going to make this for me. Uh, now, he's going to have to learn one, glass yeah. blowing, but he's got everything else already. Yeah. Um, I can make it out of metal. <laughs> I never got to class. <laughs> MC Cat says, should give us a potential starting amount for items. Yeah. Squire, oh, yeah. yeah. Prices can be a yeah. range. Estimates are ranges. 100%. You do, like, say estimates. And, say, and, and, and I agree with what Kayla's saying. Instead of having it just, this is this, give us a slight table and say, when scarce, when mm -hmm. abundant. You guys know that at the end of our Black Gum Hollow arc, I told you specifically, you may not buy health potions here. They don't have them. They've been using mm -hmm. them. Yep. I built that into the world. But like, mm -hmm. come on, guys, give me prices. How much is a bedroll? Why is there a bedroll? <laughs> like, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's because there could be a premium one and then you get like an extra long rest thing. Or you restore it. You get the uh, Deluxe one where it's like made of real fur. That's yeah. fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Which also give me more inventory items. There, It wasn't enough. Yeah. I need way more, way more. I don't, I, not as many fun, crazy things and more standards. Give me more like grappling hook stuff. I know that that sounds stupid, but give it to me. I want to see it. I had two grappling hooks the whole time. I had a grappler and a grappling hook. I didn't know when to use which one. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, so Philosidad said the thing that I was trying to say, which is to Rachel's point, that's me, Mercer, Matt Mercer, does do that all the time. Potions that are 51 place or 75 elsewhere. That is what I was trying to say, which is mm -hmm. that I know one of the key minds behind this is Matt Mercer. And if you ask him, a world building wizard, how much does a potion cost? He says, I don't know, where are you? What year? Like, and, <laughs> and so he's like, you can't establish that. The GM knows. And I'm like, no, we don't. We're tired. <laughs> You're incredible. And, you, and, and I, yeah. I, I love you. You're better than we are. Very, us. I'm very, listen, I'm very impressed that you think we know. Yeah. yeah. But we don't. Make a <laughs> but with a the day job sucks that right out of you. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. Regular inventory sheet, something you can print off and it has a blank spots next to it where the DM can fill in that amount. Exactly. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Put it on Make the abacus. I'll yeah. put five <laughs> things next to the potion. You know? <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Last one. And we are at, we are in the last few minutes here, guys. What did you least enjoy about Daggerheart? What is the thing you disliked in this open beta experience, guys? I, I'm going to say it. I want my initiative. <laughs> you want your initiative back? I, I, I love it. I, I, I really yeah. want to walk you through Genesis. It's the same thing as this one, but it's static where it's like an NPC, a player, a player, an NPC, an NPC, and any player can go on those. And like by the time you get to the end, like you can only go once until you go around once. But it's so you can cycle in, like, you know, go with the flow still. But it's, you know, there's going to be two enemies go right after you before another player. Yeah. Let's mine. That sounds, that sounds cool. Kayla, you go. <laughs> Kayla, you go. Oh. Mine is not like. A thing that you like least and this could be my build and it could be that i don't know what i'm doing the stress thing it's never a problem like i'll use one maybe and then it's clear and it never builds up and i got six spots i died because i was it's trying to fill mine up <laughs> oh yeah That's yeah that's right yeah it's Just hard said, to take fill all this smoke, up. and he yeah. still wasn't stressed about it <laughs> but she is a bard you know I'm so no, maybe that was it. I don't know. No, I agree. I mean, like, and what's we've, the point? 
We've seen it at high tier play too at this point, guys. Uh, did the stress ever matter to any of our players? Mm -hmm. I yelled wings every time. And oh, yeah, and, and high level, I think I never went over like three. I think my next character that we'll do the session zero for, I think it will incur, incur stress more often than not. Okay. Uh, okay. I think it might be certain classes do it, but we'll see. But yeah, you said that here. the enemy monsters, like it actually matters. It never even occurred to me that it could matter to anyone. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you have like, <laughs> that's so funny. If you have very little stress, it super duper matters because you go vulnerable mm -hmm. immediately. So you're yeah. in the, uh, my, my one shot that second half, y'all were getting everyone uh, stressed out. And that was just adding everything. Cause like you were playing a druid that's on fire. And every time no one took any damage, they also took stress. Even though they're healing, like then they, you know, get more stressed. But, yeah. Two things. I would say it's like. Oh, go ahead. Right. You go ahead. Sorry, I was uh, sure. real quick. Okay. I because I, I always like yeah, to yeah. engage with the community so that they are part of it. So, Philosidad said two things. One to Stevens, he said, "I will go to the wall for Daggerheart's initiative system. Stand by it. Me too. Love it. Never, never abandoning it on my side. Maybe we go to the action tokens and people can go in the, any slot they want, but." I love it. The other thing you said is give them fewer short rests and stress will matter. And I think not because y'all played five sessions in one day on Black Gum Hollow. Were y'all ever stressed? Well, I, I didn't uh, I didn't take a short rest and my some of my stuff did get higher, but not my stress. Uh, because that <laughs> <one's> <laughs> <not amazing. laughs> I would say it's like a Dark Souls fan, right? There's a big thing in the game mechanics of this is like there's these big legacy dungeons which will have like puzzles bosses fights and you can't heal or any of that or even level up or spend your experience until you get to a uh bonfire uh -huh. um you could maybe play with some stuff where you're like hitting kind of like how steven's thing was but maybe multiple fights multiple rounds then well, she did that on play. Black Gum Hollow because I was like, oh, can we rest? And she was like, the water tunnel will kill everyone. I was like, valid, valid. So she definitely had three combats yeah. on yeah. Black Gum Hollow, multiple social interactions, like multiple things to stress you out. So if your stress didn't matter by the end of that, maybe it's a level two issue, but it's not a that you didn't have enough that day. It was five yeah. sessions of play. And I think that you also, I think you have an, an option to not take fear and you can put stress on us, right? Yeah, So maybe sure. that's just not happening as much. Oh, I didn't Very know that. Very expensive though, right? Yeah, it's just Oh that, yeah, like, you want to keep your things. Yeah, it's just that fear is better used other places. I want it for my combat. I don't care about and using so, it. it that might be a bad conversion where it could be one like you spend one fear to do two stress yes mm -hmm. or pass like right you out immediately you know <laughs> I, love I love you no, not, yeah, no, no evil yeah. is that what you think is yeah. that is that, is that strikes we'll do you right down here? on the spot murdered uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like a lot. bring back like the a i want to go to chult no kidding i hate chult <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, but honestly, if, if there's ever a time you're not wanting to do something that doesn't seem worth it, then maybe the conversion's bad for it. Yeah. Or it should just be better. Chris, uh, I'm so sorry. I know we diverted. I wanted to address those. Do you remember what you were going to say, please? Nah, it's all good. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's long gone. As sorry. I mentioned before, my attention span is shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, but it's a new day every time. The you know? thing you liked the least about Daggerheart. Do you do anything to add? Because Steven's added one, Kayla's added one, Justin, Chris, either what one. I like, what I like least, what I like least. Um, I think Steven is on an uh, interesting take, right? Of like, Ooh, lack of initiative is going to be a problem with this shit. Um, <laughs> it just is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> she loves it. So I just watch the game's her always going to be clunky. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Um, it's going like, to be intimidating for new okay. players. I feel yeah. like at a table it would be more fluid, but like in in yeah. a online world, I think it's tough because you don't have that like okay. little side conversation with your players that are sitting right next to you. Like at a table, I think that it would work really well. Okay. I try to send my side stuff uh, like through the, the Discord and stuff, but that's we have to stop and go look at that. Again, just yeah. like, hey, Steven. I and I never know. look while we're playing. I will not lie to you. I'm never <laughs> looking at Discord. I love you for that I attention was... span, Kayla. That's my best friend. That's, there she is. She's got a problem. She focuses. Probably biggest gripe with this game is it feels exhausting to play sometimes, or it feels like it takes a lot out of me. I think, um, I think that could that all, be... Yeah. 
it could be us being introverts. It's possible because me too. I do introvert. have yeah. to <laughs> lay down and play Animal Crossing for a minute afterwards just to calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like this isn't an objective uh, opinion either. You know, this is completely subjective. No, so it's uh, like, everyone's it's experience may vary. I think that is the the how they do initiative doesn't like they want everyone to stay engaged all the time so they can hop in when they feel that like they need to. Compared to D and D, when you have to wait your turn, yeah. you can stop for a minute. You can yeah. calm down. You can zone out. Zone back in. Oh, and get but I didn't but think that, about that. The thing that he just said, the thing that he just said, you can zone out. I have mm -hmm. been the GM for people who loved the game that we were playing. Steven, did you love the game that we were playing at home? Did you also oh, yeah. sometimes go into different rooms and you were gone and you came back and you had no idea what was happening? It's a bad question to ask Steven. He didn't do that. He loves to I didn't do loves. that. <laughs> or if I did do that, my head would be like this while I was making the food that I was in the other room for. That. Um. Yeah. I, as a GM, I, I will say, and maybe this this is that selfish thing. I I love this because all of y'all constantly are watching. MC Cat yeah. is on yes. the actual The bathroom. Problem. I feel bad. I'm sneaking. I'm like, oh, God, I'm ruining everything. I know. I go all the time. Um, I would say to like, clarify, remember, you have to call out the comment because YouTube won't oh, know what yes. we're talking about. Oh, I'm MC Cat said, no time for bathroom breaks either during combat unless you pause. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. it, it makes for That's more fluid combat. It makes it easier for the DM because like everyone's paying attention, they don't have to stop and remind them. When I was going through my D and D campaign, I was running for two and a half years. Every three people, I would have to remind everyone what's happening. No, Every three people I didn't think of that because it was a nobody six cares. Party. Nobody cares what you're doing. They they wait for their turn. It's like those conversations with people that they're waiting for their turn to speak and they're not listening to you. They wait uh, for their yeah. turn to come. They say, I fireball. And you're like, the map has changed. There's no one there. You're up say, what? Fireball. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do I do that on Baldur's Gate. I wait for my turn. I'm looking at Pinterest. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> and then get back honestly, in there. Honestly, I mean, Steven, if you really want to advocate for initiative, you could have us do initiative for your stuff if you want. And we could see if we love it. Well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Tell us. You let us know. You know, we could do action tokens. Uh, I'll uh, I'll think about it. I won't make a decision tonight. Yeah, okay. I have time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're definitely turning off massive damage. I think as a as a mm -hmm. group, like, do we all agree to that? To turning off. Massive? I don't know. My devil not gonna do a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm a rogue. Yeah, I'll keep whatever it makes it more fair for the GM. And I know, like, I shouldn't feel bad for them. I still feel bad for Steven on his. I still do. I'll, I'll stay great. feeling bad about that time. one. Yeah. Don't really worry, that won't happen again. <laughs> yeah. Although, yeah. Rachel did oh. just take out one of our players, so maybe they don't need yeah. any Listen, help. Listen, I've, 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 I've killed point. someone in all three of my arc ending <laughs> combats, because that's how I do. <laughs> uh, I will say, I don't oh. like uh, massive damage from a mechanical standpoint, because it's less resource management that you get to go with, and you get to use your right. builds less. Mm -hmm. um, right. That's why I strike with um, evasion, right? When there's crits, you just get hit, and evasion has zero value. Whereas if you have, you build your health, you spend it on armor, every situation that still has value. Um, yeah. Funner to play, in my opinion. Yeah. I think Justin is the only one that we haven't heard his least favorite thing about Daggerheart. I've complained a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but of those Tell us more, Justin. What's the biggest? I'm not sure. I honestly think it's like uh, what I mentioned before is like, for whatever class you pick, you have to lean into it. Otherwise, you can't play it. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. you can't. Like, you can't use the same amount of resources as everybody else. I do. Um, as as a as a player, and this is like uh, I no one else can speak to it except for Rachel, maybe. But I love Justin's builds at tables. I do too. Yeah. The like crazy shit. He's like, hey, have you ever seen a a, a druid that also is a little bit barbarian that like yeah. they just <laughs> anytime they dodge, they heal. <laughs> yeah. Justin, Justin was responsible when uh, the first times that I played with Justin, I went home and I built a dex based barbarian because I was like, that's so interesting. That's so cool. I'm going to do that. And then it didn't work. And I was like, nope, not for me. I'm only going to play <laughs> stuff that fucking works. Like, I was like, uh -uh. like you nah. people with the side of the rapier. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that's like uh, one of my favorite characters I've ever played didn't really come like it didn't activate until like level 10 
And then at level 10, and he turned into a fucking monster. Yeah. <laughs> or my character. Twice. Yeah, Floyd. That's okay. Floyd. Okay, yeah. real quick, though, I, because I want to summarize. So, Steven's least favorite thing, he loves initiative. He wants initiative back. I, not even necessarily that. I just feel like there needs to be some summarize. kind of turn. Yeah, something, something needs to be changed a little bit. Okay, initiative. Something yeah. in the combat that like streamlines. Mm -hmm. Justin's was more versatility for builds. Like so mm -hmm. that you don't have to be pigeonholed into a specific thing. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Kayla, yours was, I'm forgetting. Uh, I, stress doesn't matter. Stress doesn't matter. I don't matter. care about stress. That was yeah. beautiful, <laughs> Sick, loved it. And then Chris, what was yours? Uh, what was mine? <laughs> My kitchen already waned, dude. I was like, <laughs> "Oh God!" Oh, you agreed was with it me. Evasion? Dude. No, evasion. Uh, I did agree with Steven. Also, um, I think uh, Daggerheart is a little exhausting to play. Oh, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Daggerheart is exhausting. Honest. Okay, I have fun, but Thank it is you. exhausting. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, love it. Okay, so this is our last question. We're gonna wrap it up after this. What was the thing you enjoyed most about Daggerheart? playing with my friends yeah the role play and like yeah, yeah the stories we made together everybody yeah. got to like put things into the flavor you know everywhere yeah. left and right I, I do like the mix like somewhere to my question or my uh, comment about the uh classes or uh I, I would like the or i like how the ancestries can be a lot more mixed mix oh, and match it's like they take, they, take the, they take the versatility out of classes and put it into the like the heritage yeah, uh, yeah. and the experience is tied to that okay. yeah all right yeah i love that that's a good mechanical one of like mm -hmm. the versatility of ancestries is very good mm -hmm. i love that um i think kayla's is mostly that this game does and i know mm -hmm. you have no experience in other tabletops specifically but we you agree that this game does facilitate for building a story dynamically together the world belongs to everybody like everybody gets a chance to say something about it you know yeah kayla do you like oh. tabletop rpg and yeah it's Chris, a good time do you like I... tabletop RPG? <laughs> yeah yeah i like it it reminds me of um like my background is being a musician so like when you're in a band with your buddies like drinking beer in a garage and you're jamming and just like mm -hmm. writing songs and shit this game feels like jamming to me you know what i mean where you just can kind of riff off each other get to know your buddies a little more and I see them in a different it. like like uh <laughs> I that's did cool it. <laughs> it's pretty unique yeah yeah i love that you guys okay i will say i don't know if i would have loved it with a different GM like starting me off. Although Steven did a really good job. That was really fun. I know I already yeah. said that, but <laughs> Yeah, it was so fun. No. 100%. Yeah. I yeah, think you guys you, crushed it. I oh. think if you're playing with people that are fun, it's fun. Mm -hmm. They don't have to yeah. be the best GM. If you're playing with people who are fun, it's fun. You don't have to be a great GM. You just have to be a fun time. That's all it is, mm -hmm. honestly. Um um Steven yours was like is that So my actual ah, real okay, one is go. proficiency. <laughs> um, proficiency is a <laughs> He gave the Brady Bunch answer and then he was like get into it proficiency. <laughs> proficiency is so good. I was this is one of the things we talked about really early on in one of our GM talks is yeah. this makes your starting weapon, a viable weapon through the campaign. And it can make like that family sword like a really cool fucking item for the rest of the campaign. But no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It I does. love playing with you guys. Proficiency was cool as shit. That's though. a wonderful answer. It's so specifically mechanical. So it's, yeah, that's amazing. So good. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, they're they're saying stuff in chat. Experiences oh, yeah. are definitely would... the hardest mm -hmm. part of a build, is what philosophy. Oh yeah, I get <laughs> nervous. Like some of mine, I feel like end up being like kind of the same thing. It oh, it might oh, just be because I'm not creative. I don't know. That's yeah, that, that was the part I was. Gonna, I, I wish that you ruled would kind of suggest point you towards like, hey, you should make an experience for like for social encounters, for co uh, combat, mm -hmm. for exploration. Like make them for purposes. Otherwise, you're just gonna make something that sounds funny and not get to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was my problem. Bitten chocolates. I had a choke yeah. at a dinner table, and I was like, "Yes, finally, <laughs> <laughs> I got it." <laughs> Every time I got to use it. Mm -hmm. I, I wish they would kind of point a player in a direction, at least for the how, for new players, at least. Like later, you'll get it. You'll pick up what you want to use it as. But which yeah. they do it can have be very some emotional. Examples I do also like, yeah, because oh, yeah. they let, the, was they, good. Yeah, they do mention too that you can change your experiences later. 
So like, oh, okay. if you've yeah. been like playing and doing something and like mm-hmm. you're yeah. using one of your experiences more than others, you can like focus on that one or like adjust mm-hmm. others to be more appropriate. Yeah, this character you grow. I, that's yeah. my answer is the thing that I like the most about this is that to me, the choices that you get to make in your character building, not the domain specifically, but in your character building, I think makes for the most dynamic kinds of characters that I've seen in a lot of tabletop because level up options, so versatile, so dynamic. And all of it seems, most of it seems very good. Um, It was really hard for me to not choose another domain card, even though it's, you know, um, similarly those experiences, no no character looks like you because Mm -hmm. not everybody, in in D&D, so many people have uh, persuasion or perception, yeah. uh, you know, because those are just good ones to have. So good many point. of your characters feel similar. Nobody has hot to go. Nobody, Nobody has. Nobody has welcome to the Nobody. gun show. I'm gonna cause <laughs> yep. a scene at the Pink Pony Life Club. Life lived is about experiences, yeah. yeah. You feel very mm-hmm. immersed. I felt like my character, and I always do, but I think this made that very fun, um, so. Uh, Okay, I'll suspend again. One bit of feedback about creating experiences. I, oh, I, yeah, I just wondered that. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Did we get every... – Justin, what was your favorite thing? I don't think that we got yours. Did we? Uh, I feel like I said it, but I didn't forget. Uh, you did say it. I think you did say it. I just – guys, this is hard. Okay. All right. <laughs> Why did that back? Yeah, that's... Or the ancestries mix match. Yeah. That's right. Miss match. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. That was a I good one. one. What was Chris's? Yeah, Chris. Did what was mine? Uh, I don't think you have. You're, you're always you were well, saying that we were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mine was that it facilitates a creative atmosphere that you can be collaborative, and I really enjoy that as somebody who mm. uh, plays to play music and collaboratively right. make music with my friends. So, it feels like a, a cool device for that without having to like sit there and learn an instrument, do whatever. You yeah, know what play I mean? music. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it, that kind of stuff is always very rewarding to me. So. There is at least a, a good reward for yeah. Yeah. how much you have to put into play in this game. I agree. That was beautiful, guys. Did everybody have a good experience playing together? And we're all excited mm-hmm. to continue playing together because we're gonna. Mm-hmm. Unless somebody we're gonna new characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay, so like the, the episode's not over, guys. We're going to start talking about session zero here in a second. Um, but that is officially like an hour and a half. So like, hey, does everybody, uh, real quick, thank you guys I'm so joking. much. <laughs> you made me ugly laugh so hard there. Okay. Um, That's a real look, laugh, by the way. Yeah, it really is. Like, now I'm letting you <laughs> Just fuck. Yeah. Uh, shut up. Anyway, um, so thank you guys so much much for being a part of the open beta with me i like got uh, all of you into it um kind of on a really quick whim i was like can we do it next week and then everybody was like yeah and thank you guys yeah it was it was it was scary rachel would like text me and she was like i have something really important i need to talk to you about can i call you and i was like yeah what's the what the fuck's going on i answered the phone and she's like i got a business proposition for you i was like Okay, what's happening? (laughs) How many timeshares? This unfortunately (laughs) does sound like me. (laughs) (laughs) That is me, I fear. Um, Yeah, so thank you guys so much for like, um, for doing this with me. It's been so much fun. I'm excited to continue, but you know, with the open beta closing, I had a lot of fun. And Kayla and Chris, you know, it was really cool having new people to play with, some of my favorite people, and to get y'all involved. Aww. And and for Steven and Justin, it was really cool to get back into gaming with you guys. It had been a really long time. Yeah, it has been a while. I I just had so much fun. So thank you guys. Um, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for it's having. It's cool to hang out with fun. some of your people too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't had a lot of like, you know what I mean, interaction with uh the Steven, Justin, Kayla. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We so, made new friends. Yeah. yeah and yeah. keep the old. One is silver, the other gold. Um what is, <laughs> <laughs> what is fear, the other hope. Anyway, um the action tracker is in play. I'm kidding, it's not. Do y'all oh. need a bathroom break real quick before recession zero? Do y'all want to take a bathroom break or are we good to just dive right in? 
I'm gonna take a bathroom break. Everybody take bathroom a break. Take two. I'll never take turn five. one down. All right, all right, guys, we'll be back in just like five minutes, okay? All right. <laughs> Hadoot. Hi everybody, I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven. And I'm Justin. And I'm Kayla. Not not last but uh, <laughs> not last uh, but least. Kristen! Uh, not least but last. Why I'm did Chris. you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Told you I was ready. And this cat distracted me. <laughs> oh, that's very cute. Listen, I say we round uh, the horses a cat and out. try it one more time. <laughs> I'm always ready. It was so clean. It was, it was, I love it. It'll be you, even cleaner next time. You know that I'm staying in the edit, though, right? Because that is what I do. I put the mess ups right there at the beginning, maybe at the end. Um, okay. Ready?